2023. I am Jacqueline Samuda. And I am Marcia Fraser Cummins, broadcasting live from the Center for the Arts, located right here on the Pepin campus of the University of Technology, Jamaica, the home of world-class athletes and indeed world-class professionals. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful program lined Teacher. up for this afternoon. And we want to thank hey, all the well wishers and the guests who are currently in attendance to thank you on behalf of the awardees for being here. I now invite everyone to switch your cameras off if you have not yet done so. Now, we would like to acknowledge the following persons from the University of Technology. The Deputy Registrar, Mr. Barrington Thomas, Dr. Andrea Sutherland, Dean of the College of Business and Management, Mrs. Olaposola Akinladejo, Associate Dean of the College of Management, and Dr. Sinclair Mirage, Associate Dean, Graduate Studies of the College of Business and Management and our guest speaker for this afternoon, Mr. Ricardo Allen. Heads and associate heads of school, Ms. Celia McCoy, head of school for the School of Business Administration, Mrs. Myrtle Ware, head of school for the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, and Mr. Edwards, Mr. Prince Edwards Graham, acting head of school the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics, and Leadership. Ms. Alexis Hewitt, Associate Head of School, School of Business Administration, and Mrs. Petula Senior, Associate Head of School of Business Administration. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to stand for the playing of the National Anthem of Jamaica. Our national anthem represents the beauty, pride, strength, and resilience of Jamaica and our people. My name is Agent Sasko. Please stand as we honor Jamaica, our culture, and our history. Good afternoon. I greet you all on this lovely occasion of the College of Business and Management Annual Student Awards, themed Business Resilience Post-COVID, revitalizing the global economy within the framework of sustainable development. Would you stand with me to pray? Almighty God, today we join with heaven as we celebrate and give thanks for every student here in the College of Business and Management. Thank you, Lord, that you created each one uniquely and full of potential. Thank you for your leading and guidance in each of their lives. We bless you, mighty God, for keeping them focused, willing to learn, and for their health and safety as they studied. We pray that they may all feel proud this day and enjoy sharing their achievements with family and friends. We ask that 
their hearts will be turned to you together with family, lecturers, and classmates, that their hearts and minds will be open to you, open to receive your love and salvation, open to be poured out by you in the midst of praise and glory to you. And that's, Lord God, I praise what they will offer to you, all the praise and all the glory. Help everyone within the sound of my voice to see you as the one worthy of all the glory and all the praise today. May today be remembered as a transformational day. Give each student the clarity of vision as they do so and as they need so that they will each play their part in the revitalization of the global economy while avoiding the depletion of the natural resources you have provided. And Father God, I ask that you bless this function and everyone who has worked thus far and who will contribute to the success of this event this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Very much for your prayers, Reverend Richards. We now welcome to the stage the Dean of the College of Business and Management, Dr. Andrew Sutherland, to bring us greeting. Reverend Karen Richards, Masters of Ceremony, Mrs. Marcia Fraser Cummings, Ms. Jacqueline Samuda, Associate Deans, Heads of School, Program Directors, Members of the University Community, Mr. Ricardo Allen, our guest speaker, awardees, good afternoon. First, let me congratulate you all on your, the hard work that has resulted in you being recognized here today. You have demonstrated that dedication and hard work will result in success. The theme of this year's celebration, which is also recognizing you here today, is Business Resilience Post-COVID-19, Revitalizing the Global Economy Within the Framework of Sustainable Development. So as you complete your studies and pursue your careers in business, remember these attributes and others as you build on will ensure your success. As was for you, there was an investment in your future, whether it was by family, friends, or by yourself, there was an investment, and that investment requires a return. That return will be your contribution to nation building, to the sustainable development of our country. It will also provide you the opportunity to create a path for those who will come after you that will need your assistance in order that they may be recognized and may also be successful. So as graduates of the university, when you do graduate, and I anticipate that you all will because you have shown that you're high achievers, I ask you to remember your university and remember those who will come behind you that will also be, would need the assistance that have also been afforded to you by others who went before you. So congratulations, continue to be high achievers and all the best for your future. Thank you.
Hinson rendition. Thank you so much, Center of the Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right here at the UTEC Center for the Arts. We now go into the presentation. And I know everyone is excited to know where do they start? Now, in order for the program to run smoothly, Mrs. Fraser Cummings and I will be asking groups of persons to turn their cameras on so that you can be acknowledged, you and your well wishes. And so um, we will indicate which groups will do so by the names that are called. Now, the students that are being honored this evening have worked extremely hard. And the college, we must show appreciation for sure the word that we can't hear nothing? that they have made. Now, we are going to start this afternoon's proceedings with the School of Business Administration. And so, on behalf of the head of school, School of Business Administration, Ms. Celia McCoy, we take pleasure in presenting the following categories of awardees who have excelled academically. We start off with the accounting division. Ms. Donashe Dixon, the UH Dogen Award. Mr. Adam Vernon, who has the ACCA Award for Excellence. Ms. Rihanna Johnson, the Cherry Corey Award. Ms. Theresa Gentles, the ACCA Student Achievement Award. Daniel Brumfield from, for the, from the Institute of Internal Auditors Award. And the last in the accounting division, but definitely not the least, Mr. Romel Samuel for the DHL Jamaica Award. Now for all those students whose names have just been called, and their well-wishers, you can now go ahead and turn your cameras on. Thank you kindly. Please turn your cameras off now. From the AISM division, Ms. Cadian Edwards, the Jamaica Association of Administrative Professionals Award. Ms. Brittany Warren from the Jamaica National Building Society. Mr. Romaine Williams. The award is the Jamaica Money Market Brokers Award. Mr. James Edwards receives the Bank of Jamaica Award. Mr. Brandon Shields receives the prestigious Scotia Bank Award. All those students and their well wishers whose names have just been called, please turn your cameras on and be celebrated. Mm -hmm. yes. Please turn your cameras off and thank you. From the General Management Division, Shikara Lloyd for the Dr. Ken Christian Award for Outstanding Academic Achievement and Leadership. Mr. Noel Foster for the General Management Program Award for academic excellence. From the economics division, Yeshima Graham, she receives the Jamaica Institute of Financial Services Award and Ms. Christelle Laville, the NCB Student Award for excellence. Now, all those students whose names have just been called along with their well wishes, Please turn your cameras on so you can be celebrated.
Thank you kindly awardees. Please turn your cameras off. Here are the awards from the Human Resources Management Division. Janice Fagan receives the Teresa Easy Award. Jezroy Meikl receives the Dots Personal Services Jamaica Award. The Marketing Division. Daniel Bullock receives the Courts Jamaica Limited Award. Pharrell Lowe receives the COK Soldality Corp Credit Union Award. Javon Wallace receives the Lloyd Edwards Award. Long may his name be remembered in our college. Javon Roberts receives the prestigious Red Stripe Award. All those students and their well wishes whose names have just been called, please turn your cameras on and be celebrated. Please now turn your cameras off. Thank you very much. From the production and operations management division, Joel Bryan for excellence in supply chain management. Anisha Thomas Crosby, the Clive Vassal Award for Excellence. Tashna Gray for the POM Citizenship Award. Shanil Bennett for the POM Award for Academic Excellence. And last but not least, Dana Ivey for the Wiccan Award for Excellence in Project Management. And now we close the SOBA Awards with special awards. This section goes to persons who have excelled in other areas apart from academic excellence, but including academic excellence. We have our Derek Dunn nominee, Mr. James Edwards. For the Ministry of Commerce and Fisheries Award for Leadership and Academic Excellence, Shikara Lloyd. And for our most outstanding business student from the community college, Ms. Prokosha Cameron. All those students and their well wishes whose names have been called, please turn your camera on and be celebrated. When the road is long and heavy, when it's dark, From when my help come in, my help become from you. Father, carry me. Father, carry me. 
Thank you so much, Quiet. You did a fabulous job. I now invite to the stage Mr. Kawain Anderson, an awardee from the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, to introduce our guest speaker for this afternoon. Kawain, over to you. Ricardo Allen is the founder and CEO of One on One Educational Services Limited, the Caribbean's most prominent online edtech company. Its award-winning learning management system continues to allow regional institutions, companies, governments, and individuals to deliver personalized online, on-demand, leading-edge learning solutions. While at the helm of One on One, Ricardo and his team have led the company through various rounds of financing, partnership and acquisitions, raising over 200 million Jamaican dollars in private equity funding. Recently, the team was able to successfully raise over 358 million Jamaican dollars via a share offer and is now listed on the junior market of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, JSC. Over the years, Ricardo has fueled his innate passion for mathematics and his love for technology and people to build a solution that enables thousands across the region to learn and teach courses online at their convenience. Prior to starting one-on-one, -on -one, Ricardo led the Structured Products Division at Sagicore Investments Jamaica. He currently serves as a member of the Jamaica College Old Boys Association and served as the United Way's Young Leaders Society Chairman. Ricardo is also a member of the Jamaica Stock Exchange Best Practices Committee, Chairman of the University of Technology Actuarial Science Course Advisory Committee, and the Entrepreneurship Advisory Committee. He was a 2010 Rhodes Scholarship nominee and was awarded the 2013 US Fulbright Scholarship before gracefully declining the opportunity so that he could pursue his business interests. Ricardo graduated from the University of West Indies in 2011, where he completed a Bachelor of Science in Actuarial Science. He is, com he is also a member of the Society of Actuaries, having completed numerous designated actuarial exams. Ricardo is the proud father of two daughters and prides himself on being a super big brother and a compassionate husband. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ricardo Allen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Ricardo, as I was just introduced just now. Um, you were given a little history of me and what I've done. And today I'm here to kind of talk to you a little about, you know, post COVID and, and what that means for us as an economy, as a country, as a world. You know, where are we and, and, and kind of where are we going? Now, I must be honest with you, when I came here today, I actually expected to see you sitting right in front of me. I had an option to. Um, pre-record my speech and when my team phoned me to say that boy Ricardo, do you want to pre-record the speech or you want to come in person to actually do the speech? I said, you know what? I'm not going to pre-record the speech because I want to go and see those beautiful students as they embark on a new journey. And here I am. I'm in a room and you're right here, right? So, you know, we play cat and mouse. Don't worry. But in any case, right, um, this is the post-COVID era, isn't it, right? Where we can do a speech as we are now and you can be where you are. You may be at work, you may be at home, uh, you may be somewhere, you know, not recovered just yet from the Easter holidays. Uh, but we can connect because of these new things that we've discovered, obviously, in COVID. Now, you know, I, I've prepared a, a speech, um, and the speech that I've prepared more or less kind of centers around some of these ideas. But as I usually do, um, most, if not all, of what I say will more or less come from my own kind of journey. Um, you see, I, I tend not to rely very much on, on theory. 
um, as a background, you'd have heard in the introduction that I'm trained as an actuary. Um, so you know, very statistical based, you know, love my math and data is always right. You know, that, that's kind of how I look at things, right? But I just believe that uh, when, when I'm speaking and I'm addressing a group of people who are standing on the line waiting to go to that next part of the world, your journey, or whether you're in university or you're advancing, I think it's so important to give you some practical um, takeaways that you yourself can actually use to improve yourself, your life, and kind of how you see the world, right? Um, and, and just kind of step back a little and tell you a little about, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one and, and our company. Um, recently, I looked at a business plan from 2013 when we just started the company. And, you know, I saw a line in that business plan. And effectively, the line said that I wanted to personalize education using artificial intelligence, right? And when I had written that, obviously I raised funding. Uh, I raised about five million dollars in funding at the time. Then I believe you never spent the raise about twenty million. And then I got some money. I say yeah, raise a lot of money, over a hundred million dollars. But at the time, AI, as you know it, um, was nowhere as it is now. And I was considered a very, I would say, an exuberant person. People labeled me as exuberant. Um, I was crazy. I was mad. At the time that I drafted that business plan to create um, a super intelligent tutor that could effectively uh, teach someone without a human teaching them, uh, people thought it was a mad idea. And, uh, and so many people laughed and ridiculed me. And also, uh, I gave up a scholarship at the same time. So I was really considered I was crazy, right? Um, anyhow, um, a few years later, 10 years later, uh, we've listed that very company we started on the Jamaica Stock Exchange um, for, for $2 billion. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm still working to build, build that uh, personal tutor. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you call me crazy, do it at your own um, peril, right? Um, so let, let's talk and, and let's talk about, you know, kind of how I see the world. Now, as we stand here, the world is changing very fast. Mm -hmm. Um, where we are today is much different from where we were three years ago. Um, you know, personally, professionally, everything is changing and everything has changed. Some of them are very obvious, you would have seen. Um, there are some things that we got used to during COVID that post COVID, um, you know, humans are creatures of habits, right? And if you look back in history, um, you know, post World War II, first post World War I, you know, there were changes in how the society operated simply because there were these. Uh, things that happen that, that effectively change the landscape of the entire space, right? And coming out of COVID, we would have been locked at home. Uh, for those who did not know, about 100 years ago, you had something similar, which is the Spanish flu, 1990. Uh, it was really bad, right? And, and, and the things changed after. So, so we're really repeating ourselves in terms of history here, right? And the question is, uh, how are we going to predict what happens next? And, and can we predict what happens next? And, you know, should this be the right way we're thinking about it? Um, you have persons here who are in hospitality. There are persons who have studied agriculture. There are persons who have studied entrepreneurship. Um, are you doing the right things? Uh, are you, you know, barking up the right tree? Uh, are you focusing on the right things to make you successful and prepare you for the future? These are some of the questions that I hope to answer in my own talk. Now, just to share with you, I left university about uh, 10 years ago. And um, post-university, I, I, I did my actual exams and I passed. I got a perfect score in one exam. And mm -hmm. after that, I stopped doing the exam to start making math videos for people. Again, right? Yeah, that's crazy. And uh, people ask me why I was doing it. Well, I saw something very important that happened when I was going to UA where um, I went into a lecture room. And uh, while being in the lecture room, I realized we were here with 200 students and, you know, the, the lecture taught and I was there and I learned, that's okay. And everybody learned. But what I've realized is that uh, I didn't understand some concepts that I would have loved to talk to that teacher a little bit more, to understand those concepts. And if I didn't understand, 199 other students probably didn't understand. And then we went to these tutoring sessions, right? It was like 10 students to one. And I realized in those sessions, I could have a more personalized engagement with that teacher. And so at the end of every tutoring session, I realized I got more out of it. Um, subsequent to that, uh, when I was going to you know, these evening classes at UWE and so on, at the end of the nine o'clock in the nights and so on. Uh, and, and when we left those classes, 
you know, I've, I've always been intrigued by kind of how what I've learned will be used and applicable tomorrow. And, and how we will use it to kind of bend the universe, right? And I remember every time I go to my lecture and I ask questions and so on, you know, some of them really couldn't be bothered, bothered and some of them really took me on and helped me to understand some of these concepts. But I realized something was a little different with me and how I, I, I you know, thought about the stuff, right? And, um, how I realized this, uh, you know, I was studying for one of my actual exams and uh, in studying for the exam, it was financial mathematics, if I remember. And I was really struggling with a particular idea that they were trying to teach. And uh, I decided that, look, I'm going to ask some of my friends about this. But essentially, I studied the, the thing. I watched the videos. I studied the thing. And when I went to do some of the questions, I was doing the question two ways, and I was getting different answers. And I wrote to the book publishers after checking with all my friends, all my lectures, and so on. And I said, book publisher, I've studied the thing one way. I've done the question. One way I got it right, another way I did not get it right. Why is that the case? The book publisher wrote back to me and said, I'm afraid, son, you're correct. We're going to update the book and give you acknowledgement. Now, when, when people, when I share that story, and I have it in the email I can share with you guys, uh, people miss the, the, the essence of that that I'm sharing, right? And really what it was, what I figured out is that there are people who are willing to keep the world the same, and there are people who are willing to change it. And I had to make a decision when I left university. Who am I? Am I interested in keeping the world the same? It's quite okay to leave and go on to do something to advance and to keep things going how it should be. And keep the world the same, right? And this includes going and getting a job, writing a resume, going and going through the, the thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. You live a good life and it's okay. It's beautiful. It's fine. But if everybody does that, humanity would not move forward. And the truth is we need both because they need consumers and they need producers. So there are some of you who are watching today who are going to be consumers. Naturally, that's going to be the case. You're going to go out in the world and you're going to consume. You're going to keep the world how it is and that's perfectly okay. But I realized quite quickly that I'm someone who has a very unique purpose on this earth to change it. And using my gift in math, I've attempted to change it. And this is how I see a post-COVID year. The world has changed. We no longer have that choice. To stay the same is the past. You cannot. How are you going to do it? The world as we know it, forget about it. You're going out there in hospitality. I went to a hotel recently in Miami. A robot came and serviced the room. They brought my water, they brought all my toiletries, and they, 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 the only thing they didn't do, do was to spread the bed, which, by the way, was an opportunity that I saw. <laughs> but they did everything. And, you know, me, the entrepreneur in me, I went downstairs and asked the guy who controlled this robot, and how did they make them? And I started researching, how can I now make that bot spread the bed? Because then I would be winning. But the idea is that this idea that, you know, we're being prepared for the world as it exists, that's the past. I just told you about that robot. I tell you about agriculture where I've seen places all around the world where, you know, agriculture as we know it is far from my aunt Rhoda, my great grandmother who used to go in the field and dig yam and, and dig up our, our, our pineapples and all of that. It has changed. And we have to be prepared for that. The world has changed so as far as entrepreneurship. And I just started out in entrepreneurship. It wasn't as advanced as it is. No, no, it is far advanced where a lot of people who are going into entrepreneurship believe in this whole idea of building things from scratch. I believe in taking something that is built and improving. You have to understand that technology, as we know it, a lot of people see technology and so on, but every technology that has ever invented was invented on previous technology. Everyone. Name one, I'll tell you what it was built on. Right? You have WhatsApp, text messages came before that. You had Facebook, well, you had iPad. You had all of these things. You have every technology, you have Uber that is now we had a taxi service, but every time a technology has come, it has come to improve that which existed before. Think about that for me. And so what I'm saying is that as we move forward, these things that we're used to and accustomed to will change and we have to lead the change. The reason we have to lead the change is that because there is the life expectancy of every one of us is 75 years old. If you are 20 years old, you have 50 years to live. In 50 years, what are you going to do with that? Because the guy who is 70 and 80, he's not interested in changing it. He's on his way out. Now, there are a few people who did change it. I'll tell you something. For the, the, the guy who created KFC, he 
it was 60 odd when he created it. And he changed it. I mean, I'll be putting on pounds on each and every one of them. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that those who will change the world is you and me. The average founder, the computer, as you know, the Apple computer, Microsoft, Bill Gates was 23 and, and uh, Steve Jobs was about 20. You are right here. You're that 20 year old. You're that 23 year old. And the question you have to ask yourself is that how will you use what you have to change and impact that world? That world that will change. Now, I said this to you. By the way, if you realize I've not gone to the speech. And the reason I've got, not gone to the speech is not because I don't want to go there, but because that's not what I prepared for. And why I came here, not expecting this, and I had to adjust. And I want to tell you a little about adjusting, right? Adjusting for me, you know about chat GPT, don't you? Yeah. Right? Now, chat GPT is going to change the world. It has already changed the world. In fact, I use chat GPT you now and other large learning language models to build code and other things. I've used it to write my speech here today that I was going to come and tell it. I'm not reading. Um, but it's going to change the world, and it's going to change the world quite drastically. And so the question is that what's your purpose in the world if this thing exists that can do just about anything that you can think of? Well, I can tell you what your purpose is. The lawyers are going to go first. The lawyers are going to go first, right? That's, they just did that study at Harvard, and it came out that effectively the, 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 pos the, the position or profession that will be most affected by large language models will be lawyers. They're going to go first. And the reason they're going to go first is because most of the crowd, and if there are any lawyers on the call or anybody listening, not a disrespect is a fact. This is research. Um, but most of the times, these, these positions that are more built on theory, interpretation of law, and so on, what's going to happen is that those things will be modeled. And then it's going to be left up to interpretation, style, and creativity in terms of using to win in the court. So you're still going to have lawyers in the courtroom. Don't get me wrong. But to build a rental agreement, you won't have lawyers, right? So they're going to go first. Next persons who are going to go are people who are in design and so on, right? You're going to have those people who you take weeks to build posters and so on. They're going to go. Now, in hospitality, agriculture, and so on, those things are more labor intensive. Mm -hmm. So those are going to stay on for a little longer. They're going to stay on for a little longer. Entrepreneurs, if you're on the call, I can tell you that entrepreneurs, are some of the most creative people I know. And you are going to require that creativity. What I'm saying is that no matter how large language models become a precedence that we have, you cannot replace creativity. And it's the most difficult thing to replace in terms of going to a room and wowing that room, just exuding confidence and presence to win whosoever your audience is. So if you're studying hospitality or any of these things, you now have to shift your mindset from being the same and being like everybody else to being the best version of yourself. And what new ideas can you bring to the space? I just told you about one with the robots going in the rooms and cleaning and so on. But what else can we bring to the space? If we're talking about agriculture. What else can we bring to the space? If we're talking about entrepreneurship, what else can we build to bring to the space? But not only that are we bringing it to the space, but it allows you to become globally competitive. The world as you know it, where you can only get a job in Jamaica is flawed. At one on one, we have 70 people, and I can tell you that half of those persons are employed outside of Jamaica. We have a globally competitive workforce now. And you, my friend, are going to become a part of that. And if you're a part of a global workforce, you have to be prepared to compete globally, not just here in Jamaica. I tell you something when I was in high school, I used to be in a class where I got 60%, and boy, sometimes you come first, second, and third. And then I met up with my girlfriend who attended Immaculate. And she got 90 at average, and she was coming way down the pecking order. So I felt great in my little school knowing that boy, a little school, you know, JC is a big deal, and they just said that. But the point is that I felt great in my local mindset, thinking that I am, I am king in this class. But in a global sense, I realized somebody over here is just running right up, and so I had to lift my game for her. That's where the workforce is. You're going to be competing with people on a global scale and an international scale, and you have to be prepared for that. Now, I said it's still sustainable development. If there are anybody in this room who wants an opportunity and you want to get ahead of it, start figuring out how to handle electric vehicles. I tell you why. 
They just passed a law in the U European Union effectively banning gas powered vehicle by 2035. If they ban gas powered vehicle, it means that electric vehicles, electrical vehicles, will be the only vehicles that exist post 2035. And if that's the case, can we get ahead of it? That's a business opportunity. But not only can we get ahead of it, can we lead in our own way in creating a way that we can actually get ahead of that part and make money off of it and monetize it and so on? Because why are we waiting? Why are we not hearing these things in Jamaica? We're going to wait until 2030 when they say, oops, we have five years and then we have a very short time to react. So my friends, I'm sharing with you that in order to prepare for a post-COVID reality, you have to think ahead. You have to be like Ricardo back in 2030, who saw the world going to this digital form of learning, who created a one-on-one, -on -one, who could now get a public listing and now competing regionally and globally on the scale. That's where your mindset has, has to be. And then and only then will you realize the power that you have and the impact that you can have to drive the world forward. As I mentioned, as I mentioned, the world as we know it has changed. It's not that it's going to change, it has changed. We're living in that future that we predicted. We're living in the space that we predicted. In fact, I said to my team this week that, guys, AI is here. And let's get to it. And I can't find anybody out there who does this AI thing really good because the universities were not preparing the students enough for it. And so we get caught in our pants down again. And now we have to play catch up and then buy the services overseas because those guys are done. We need to start. And it starts exactly with you. If you're listening to me now, I want you to leave with this. The ones who usually benefit are the ones who usually can quote unquote predict. In the short term, they're going to call you mad, they're going to call you insane, they're going to tell you that you don't know what you're talking. You remember Noah's Ark? Thought it was crazy, right? In fact, if no one knows to come and tell me that I need to join a boat because it's going to be a flood, I wouldn't believe you either, right? But that's the thing. Those who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. And you have to be crazy enough. You have to be brave enough. You have to bet on yourself enough to change the world so that that world you want to have for tomorrow, you can create today or start creating it today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ricardo. I've just celebrated my 33rd birthday. I'm getting older. See, I get tired just being up here. And my life dream is to create a human replica of a tutor, an AI replica of a human tutor that can tutor every child globally using artificial technology. And that's what I'm prepared to do. We're investing heavily in this, and this is my life dream. Call me crazy at your own peril. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Allen, it is my distinct pleasure on behalf of the Dean of the College of Business and Management, Dr. Andrea Sutherland, members of faculty and fellow awardees to express our sincere gratitude to you. Your uplifting and triumphant journey has inspired us to collectively strive for excellence in all facets of our lives, and we are grateful that you have been able to share and educate us this afternoon. The passion that permeated your discourse will long resound with us. It is one thing to hear, but to listen, comprehend, and use this information for good is indeed a great skill. So rest assured that your words have been heard and appreciated by highly skilled individuals this afternoon. Again, I'd like to express heartfelt gratitude for your contribution to our 2023 celebration of excellence. We wish you continued success in your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kedar, Kedar Martin. Mr. Martin is an awardee from the School of Advanced Management. Wow, what a speech. Thank you very much. Now, on behalf of the head of school, School of Advanced Management, Dr. Garnet Sinclair Mirage, we take pleasure in presenting the following category of awardees from the school. We start off with 
Mrs. Venice Finsey Parchment for her excellent performance in the field of entrepreneurship. Mr. Kedar Martin for his performance in the field of management. Miss Ophelia Bramwell in the field of finance. And for the most outstanding research project, we have four awardees who formed a part of the winning team. They are Camille Maury Brown, Marcia Hamilton, Whitney Scott, and Mr. Kamoy Stennett. And the supervisor for this winning team is none other than Professor Paul Bode. Now all those students and their well wishers whose names have just been called, please turn your cameras on to be celebrated. Thank you kindly awardees. Please turn your cameras off. On behalf of the head of the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, Mrs. Myrtle Ware and members of faculty, we take great pleasure in presenting the following categories of awardees from the school for the academic year 2021-2022. The Nigel Cooper Award for the most outstanding student in hotel and resort management goes to Caressa Steven. The Jamaica Bakers Association Award for Industry Awareness goes to Ashalka Plummer. The Jamaica Tourist Board Award for the most outstanding tourism student goes to Kimona Blake. The Jamaica Pegasus Award for the most outstanding performance in food and beverage management goes to Janelle Valentine. The Separate Jamaica Limited Award for the most outstanding food and beverage labor cost control student goes to Ariel Barrow. The Country Cool Award for the most outstanding baking student goes to Anthea Thompson. And again, the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management Award for the most outstanding culinary student goes to Ariel Barrow. All those students and their well wishers whose names have just been called, please turn your cameras on and be celebrated. The Derek Dunn nominee goes to Jason Clark. The Winifred Allman Award for displaying artistic ability in food preparation, long may her name be remembered, goes to Vanessa McCoy. The Student of the Year nominee goes to Kawain Anderson. The Marcella Blake Watson's Award for Leadership, Commitment and Resilience goes to none other than Timoy Gordon. The most outstanding major project in the category of the hotel and tourism management goes to Charlene Anderson, Joanna Facey, Suzanne Paulwell, Samantha Stevenson, and Tatiana Tomlinson for their groundbreaking investigative work, branding of Portland as a luxury tourism destination. On the food service management, the award goes to none other than Amariah Taylor 
Letitia, Letitia Davis, Alia Parkinson, Cara McDean, Enrin Valentine, Kalia Walfall for their amazing project, project, the conversion of domestically produced cooking oil waste into a usable product. Please turn your cameras on and be acknowledged. Now, please turn your cameras off. Thank you very much. Now, our next group of students distinguish themselves by achieving a grade point average of 3.56 and above. And the list of students that we're going to call now have done that. They achieve that grade point average and they have earned themselves a place on the prestigious Dean's List. On behalf of the Dean of the College of Business and Management, we take great pleasure in presenting the following awardees for the academic year 2021-2022. From the John Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics, and Leadership, our four top students are Sydney Nicole White, Ayana Billings, Raheem Jagdi, and Janine Campbell. From the School of Hospitality, and tourism management, mm -hmm. our 18 top students are Amariah Taylor, Anthea Thompson, Ariel Barrow, Ashelka Plummer, Daniel Berry, Daniel Legister, Demar Levy, Janice Bullard, Janelle Valentine, Kawain Anderson, Kadia Norman, Teresa Stever, Pimona Blake, Latoya Ducali, Mishka Clark, Nastasia Edward, Paula Bent, and Shamai Chambers. And from the School of Business, we have 135. Awardee. So, Miss Marcia and I will try our best to quickly go through that list. Alia Douglas, Abigail Robinson, Abigail Hermit, Abigail Douglas, Adam Vernon, Akela Gale, Akela Phillips, Alafia Allen, Alanis Blake, Althea Wards. We continue. Alexia Quiz, Alicia Absalom. Amanda White, Amanda Miller, Amanda White, W-H-I-T-E, Angel Bennett, Anjali Miller, Ashoria Bernard, Ashikwa Smelly, and Barrington Gray. Brandon Jacaro, Britannia Campbell, Britannia Dacre, Camille Norman, Sidoni Duncan, Siobhan Davis, Christelle Levine, Chris Ann Smith, Courtney Harrison, Courtney Cooley. Deandra McKellar, Daniel Lewis, Daniel Spaulding, Danisha Gale, Davia McLean, Deandra Livermore, Denise McLean, Donna Barrett, Donna Shea Dixon, and Donna McNally. Duania Dixon, Elsa Day Bridge, Gayanne Davis, Giselle Collins, Ishana Wilmot, Jada Francis, Jada Murray, Jamar Hunter, James Edwards, Jamoya Sewell. Then we have Janice Thompson, Janiel Jackson, Javane Richards, Javon Green, Janiel Wollaston. 
Gerald Morrison, Joshuana Cardet, Julissa Jackson, Candice Brown, and Taylor McKenzie. Followed by Kian Watson, Jimani Bryan, Lashwani Spencer, Latanya Samuda, Leighton Wright, Lenoya Francis, Leonard Hall, Lloyd Ann Thom Thomas, Misha Francis, Marche Irons, Michaela Howell, Mikhail Walker, Monique Blake, Monique Blake, Moya Bakers, Nastasia Smith, Neroy Williams, Nicole Whitaker, Normanique Townsend, O'Keefe Malcolm, and Anita Jacobs. Not to be outdone by O'Shane Vassiana, Octavia Porter, Prokosha Cameron, Kiana Campbell, Raheem Lindo, Rajane Andrews, Rajay Brooks, Rihanna Rochester, Rihanna Johnson, Renice Lane, Rashane Howell, Romel Samuel, Rochelle Hamilton, Roxanne Silvera, Sabita Smith, Sabrina Hansel, Sahara Henry, Sakoya Ford, Sashana Cunningham, Sashay Walton. Serena Rhodes, Simora Small, Shanice Dixon, Shana K. Plunkett, Shanoi Brown, Chantal Ellis, Shantea Parkinson, Shaquille Kamok, Siobhan Eucart, Chanel Blake, Shaquan Rochester, Sharika Thompson, Shereen Morgan, Sharice Wright, Shevoni Davidson, Shikara Loy, Taj William, Tajai Thomas, Tajay Braham, and Tanisha Pike. Tarani Smith, Thahalia Thomas, Theresa Gentles, Tiana Blake, Tiona Dixon, Tony Ann Williams, Tony Ann Russell, Tremaine Dixon, Trina Beach, Tristina Russell, and last but not least, our final five awardees, Udell Hansen, Venetia Peppel, Wayne Gilzine, Jowling Liang, and Yatira Gibson. These are our 135 Dean's List awardees from the School of Business Administration. We now come to the end mm -hmm. of this afternoon's proceedings. Mm -hmm. And I want to, on behalf of myself, Jacqueline Samuda and Mrs. Fraser Cummings, to thank everyone who has been here to support the students, to support the awardees for their wonderful performance for the previous academic year, 2021. 2022. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jackie. This season of excellence would not have been possible save for the untiring and unwavering efforts of committee members, COE members, Jacqueline Samuda. Our chair committee, the committee chair, Ms. Diana Shakes. Audrey Byfield. And Marcia Fraser. We cannot close this evening's uh, event proceedings without saying special thank you to the Center for the Arts and the hardworking team from the LTSU for their unwavering support. Special thanks to, to our sponsors and industry partners. We have Camp Jamaica, represented by Mr. Patrick Payne. We have the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. We have Separate Limited and JF Mills. Ladies and gentlemen, it was indeed a pleasure being your Masters of Ceremony this evening. I am Jacqueline Samuda. And I am Marcia Fraser Cummins, wishing you good health, 
and excellence in all your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much.